did it create itself? Did this universe create itself? Did we create ourselves? No. If we did not exist in the first place, how could we have bought or how could this universe bought itself into existence? If it wasn't there, how could it make itself there? And we don't attribute to the universe and to the things in the universe the ability to create. What is the universe made of? The universe is made of stars and galaxies. Lots of stars and lots of galaxies. Do the stars and galaxies have the ability to create? Do we attribute to them the ability to order things? No. In fact, they themselves are in need of being ordered and they themselves are in need of a creator. And if something is not able to create or organize on its own, then a large collection of them cannot also make something like that happen. It's that simple. It doesn't matter how many you bring, they still lack that ability to do something. So the same with the universe. The universe could not have created itself. It couldn't have ordered itself because that's not an attribute of the universe. Rather, it is in need of something to create it. Are we the creators of it? Human beings? No. Because we ourselves need a creator. So what is the conclusion? The conclusion of the rational mind is this. That this universe needs a creator. It needs an organizer. We need something. We need some explanation of how this universe came to be and how we came to be the way we are. And therefore it makes sense that there is something outside of this universe, different from it, separate from it, that has organized and created and that sustains this universe in which we live. So the creator. The creator is different and distinct from the creation. The creation is needy, the creation is temporary, the creation is in need of a sustainer. Whereas the nature of the creator must be different. If the nature of the creator is not different, if the, in other words, if the creator is of the same nature as the creation, then that creator would need a creator. And if that creator was not different, then that creator would need a creator. And what you would have is creator creating creators ad infinitum. So this question, well, okay, I recognize the logic and I recognize the reason behind the existence of a creator, but then who created the creator? It's not a valid question because the nature of the creator is different. The nature of the creator is eternal. The nature of the creator is infinite. The creator is without beginning and without end. The creator is self-sufficient, ever-living. So an ever-living, self-sufficient, eternal being does not need a creator because that being is ever-living and self-sufficient. Let's think about this in another way. Why the existence of such a being is logically and rationally necessary. Let's give an example. If I am here, or you imagine yourselves at home, and you have a big table or you have some big cupboard, and you want to lift it and you want to move it from one place to the other. You're not able to do that on your own. You're not able to do that on your own. So what you want to do is you want to enlist the help of someone. So you go to your next door neighbor and you say, listen, I want to move this cupboard. Can you give me a hand? And your neighbor says, listen, I'll give you a hand, but only if my friend gives me a hand. So that other person says, yeah, yeah, I will give you a hand, but only if someone else gives me a hand. And imagine everybody makes that condition. Everybody says, I will only help if somebody else helps. If everybody along the line makes that condition, will your cupboard ever be lifted? Will your furniture ever be moved? No, because everyone is saying, I will not help unless someone else helps. So if you have a creator, creating a creator, creating a creator, you get the situation where nothing ever gets created. Just as your cupboard never gets moved, nothing ever gets created. But the creation is here. I'm sitting here, you're sitting there, look out of the window, you'll see the sun, you'll see the moon, you'll see the stars, you'll see the trees. The creation is here. That means that something has been created. So you can't have creators creating creators ad infinitum. There must be somewhere where it stops. And it has to stop at a being who is distinct and separate 
and different in his nature from that which he created. Now, it is hard to imagine. Reason cannot really accept that there could be two eternal, infinite, self-sufficient beings, let alone three, four, or five. So the nature of this creation indicates to us that if there was more than one creator, there would not be a creation, there would be chaos. But rather the underlying unity and the intricacy and detail that we find existing in this universe indicates to us that there must be one united, wise, powerful and intelligent force behind all of this. So here's our discussion, here's our reasoning, here's our step by step, stage by stage process of reasoning that we have gone through and what have we reached at the end of it? What we have reached at the end of all of this is a simple conclusion. This universe has a creator. This creator is different from the universe. The creator is wise, the creator is powerful, and there is only one such creator. Out of all the religions in this world, of all the philosophies and the religions and the ideologies in this world, which one teaches us to believe in one creator who is eternal, who is self-sufficient, who is infinite, wise and powerful, and who is different and distinct from the creation. You will find that although many religions and philosophies have some aspect of this idea, nearly all of them compromise it in one way or another. For example, let us take broadly the Hindu concept of God. The Hindu concept of God, for example, and I use this in a very generalized sense because I do realize that many different people within Hinduism have many different beliefs. But generally, the Hindu concept of God is that the creation is God. God is everywhere and in everything. So this is the idea, what we call it, pantheism. That everything is God and God is everywhere and in everything. But this contradicts reason. This contradicts our whole process that we have used it. If you think back upon what I said, how can the creation be the same as God? And if the creation is the same as God, then what created it? The whole rational basis that we used in order to understand that God exists falls on its face. So the idea that God and the creation is one and the same is not acceptable. It, it's not rational. It can't be understood by reason. There is no basis for such a concept and for such a belief. And then you find other religions, for example, Christianity. By and large, most Christians believe that Jesus was God. But traditional Christian theology tells us also that Jesus was the manifestation of God. In fact, many religions claim that God manifested himself as a human being or some type of creature. Again, this compromises that basic belief. How can something be creator and created at the same time? How can something be both eternal and infinite and finite and temporary? How can something be self-sufficient and needy at the same time? It's like saying the square became a circle but was still a square. How can a square become a circle and still stay a square? It doesn't make any sense. It's irrational, it's illogical. It's enough reason to reject any religion that tells us God became a man or God became some type of creature because it's irrational. It doesn't make any sense. And it's something you can never, ever prove. You can believe it if you want to, but you can never prove it because it's a commonsensical, rational impossibility. And whatever is a rational impossibility can never be proven. It's that simple. So what religion is there in the world? What religion tells us to believe in one God that is wise, self-sufficient, powerful, who has created this universe and sustains it. Well, you're reduced to very few religions. Perhaps the only two religions that teach such a clear concept of the one God is Judaism and Islam. Well, if you want to become a Jew, by and large, Orthodox Jews will tell you tough. Because if you want to become a Jew, you have to be born a Jew. 
your mother has to be a Jewish woman for you to be a Jew. So what universal religion, what, uni what religion that is universal, that is there for every person, that invites every person to believe in this rational, simple, clear, commonsensical belief is left. Look to the Qur'an. Open the Qur'an. Read the Qur'an. Read about Islam and see for yourself the concept of God that the Qur'an teaches.